Welcome, this lesson is all about how to learn and practice the major pentatonic scale guitar positions. There is a specific way to work on them to really get them down, and that's what we're going to cover in this lesson. This lesson will show you the five major pentatonic scale guitar positions so you can play in any major key all over the neck. If you follow this approach and you learn and practice these in this way, you will have a much easier time being able to apply these scale forms to real music, knowing where you are on the fretboard, and knowing where you are in a major key. <music> I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I talk a ton about music theory, mapping out the fretboard, and practice strategies. This is part of a series that I'm doing on several different scale types and how to work on them in a very specific, kind of unique way that I think makes all the difference in really internalizing scales. If you want to check out the other videos I've done walking through this process with other scale types, check out the link in the description to a playlist that links to all the videos in the series. There are other ways to play any scale type, but these are the five scale forms, scale positions that you really want to make sure you at the very least have down really well. And then you can work on other ways as well after that. All five of the patterns here are written in C major, but if you move them around, you can play them in any key. So I'm repeating a lot of stuff that I talked about on the other videos in this series, because I want each video to really be the go-to place if someone wants to learn about that particular type of scale without having to watch them all. It's not a thing where you're supposed to be able to watch them all. But at the same time, hopefully if you do watch multiple of them, it's good to hear this stuff multiple times to really internalize it. The reason we need a special approach when working on scales, the thing that I'm going to show you here, is because we have kind of a unique problem when we are playing scales on the guitar, and that's that we're playing in positions. And that means that the root is kind of just somewhere in that scale position. The root is not automatically the lowest and the highest note of the scale position. In fact, in all of them, it never is the lowest and highest note in the scale positions. For most instruments that don't play in positions, it, doesn't, it wouldn't make sense for them to practice scales without playing the root first and the root on the as the lowest note and as the highest note, so you can really hear the sound of the actual scale. That is, unless they're practicing an exercise that specifically calls for it being different, or practicing modes is different, or melodic patterns, which we're going to talk about more in a little bit too. Yet, on the guitar, we often, we just have these scale forms, and we often just play them up and down, and play the lowest note to the highest note, just try to get them physically down, and we can get them physically down, and we can get kind of the sound of the overall selection of notes, but we're not targeting the root in a specific way, so we're not really hearing the true essence of the sound of the scale, unless we are coming back to the root. So targeting the root in a specific way is the secret to truly internalizing uh, the actual scale that we're trying to work on. And then we'll start to understand how we can use the same physical scale same physical scale form, same shape, to play other types of scales. And that's how we start to play modes and stuff like that too. For example, these five major pentatonic scale patterns, they are the same exact physical scale forms as the minor pentatonic scale. So when is it one, when is it the other? When is it major pentatonic? When is it minor pentatonic? It, it's neither or both if it's just a collection of notes, but it's when we play real music or play in the context of treating one of those notes as the main note, as the root. And we have to, so we have to give special attention to the root when we practice these things to actually hear it as the scale that we're intending to practice. So here are the rules to practicing the root to root method with any scale. Following these guidelines makes all the difference. Number one, you want to start on the root. Number two, you want to play the entire scale form. Number three, when you land on a root, anytime, you want to repeat that root and then keep going the same direction. You can pause if you want, or not pause at all and just keep going, but you have to play the root twice whenever you land on a root. Rule number four, don't repeat any other notes that are not the root. You see what we're doing here? We're really making the root stand out, so therefore it's going to sound like the actual scale we're trying to play. So don't repeat any note that is not the root. So don't repeat those outside notes. Don't repeat the highest note or the lowest note unless those happen to be the root. And number five, the last guideline, is that we want to land on the same root that we started on after playing the whole scale form. So we'll play any notes that are below that first root that we played, and then come back around, land on that root again as the last note. That's it. The experience of playing a scale like this is very, very different than just playing the scale form up and down. And you'll hear because I'm now I'm just going to demonstrate through all five of those major pentatonic scale guitar positions with this exact root to root method so you can hear it, so you can see it, and this is exactly how I want you to be able to play it yourself. If you're familiar with how these scale shapes are the exact same shapes as the minor pentatonic scale, notice how when I play them this way, it's going to sound distinctly major. <laughs> Thank you. 
Once you have these down in that way, here are the next steps to take to continue to working on mastering your scales. The first thing is to be able to do that in other keys, in every other key. We want to be able to do that. These scale forms just move around, so we should be able to do them in any key. So ideally, practice in an organized way so you can track that you've at some point done that, all five of the major scale guitar uh, positions have done all of them in all 12 keys at some point i like to create a little kind of checklist and i can just see it's not super intense or anything it's just saying oh it looks like i did that before here's a blank checkbox let me make sure i can do it in another key it can be very casual um, and and just really helps a lot so make sure you can do that in every key the second thing is to be able to play any scale with melodic patterns that's just creating like a linear pattern um, out of the notes that then can be repeated through the scale. The first pattern I always recommend is melodic thirds, but with the pentatonic scale, it's not going to be melodic thirds, but it's the idea of taking, playing the first note, skipping up a note, coming down one note, skipping up the next, coming down one, and continuing that pattern. So if I do that with the second scale form here out of these five, <laughs> So work on melodic patterns and that's the first one I recommend and actually that exact one that I just played I have written out in a free PDF of the top three pentatonic scale guitar patterns that's one of them and I have it written out with notation and tabs useful little very simple handout there's a link in the description to get that if you want a nice little exercise sheet the third thing is to be able to do the scale exercises ideally the root to root exercise but just be able to play your scale forms with a metronome doesn't really matter what tempo, just be able to really comfortably do it at a pace. And that just proves to us that we're not hesitating between the notes. That's a really important step to take. And the last thing to be able to do as we're working on scale forms is to improvise with them. And very important in this case, since we worked on this root to root stuff, improvise with them returning to the root, really treating the root as the home base. So you are really aware of what scale that you're practicing, what the tonality is that you're trying to create. So um, in, the, in practice wise, don't hesitate to just start on the root, end on the root, come back to it, pause on it, stuff like that. And you can get more adventurous from there, but improvising in that way is really helpful. And just a couple other things to take into consideration as you're working on your scales. One is make sure you're alternate picking. Uh, if you have a pick, down, up, alternating picking as much as possible. And, or if you're doing finger style, alternating between two fingers, sometimes finger thumb or these two fingers. Um, the other thing is to watch out for your buzzing and your tone and your velocity, your, you know, how aggressively are you playing the notes and any kind of rattling. Just listen for the tone and, and the feel and your tension. And the third thing is to try to play legato so there's not big gaps between the notes. Try to connect them so it's kind of smooth between the notes. If you can map out and work on and learn your five major pentatonic scale guitar positions in this way that we talked about, you will have a much easier time applying it to real music, uh, learning things fast remembering them longer, knowing where you are on the fretboard, knowing where you are in a key, and you'll start to see how almost everything we play always relates back to scale structure in some kind of way. We want to be able to do this with every type of scale that we're interested in learning. That's why I'm doing this series of kind of going through this same process with several scale types. The next video that I'm doing in this series is going to be on the minor pentatonic scale form. This is the one that like everyone plays so much. And actually, I think that video is needed more than some of these other ones because it's used so much that mainly one of the five positions is used and we're going to work on all five positions and try to get them equally uh, sounding good equally comfortable as i mentioned if you want to get that free pdf just go to soundguitarlessons.com slash three patterns that's number three patterns or use the link in the description that little handout of those three exercises is really useful it can make all the difference with getting improvisations and solos to sound less like scales and more melodic that's it for this lesson make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell happy scale practicing thanks for watching take care